Leaving everyone and everything you know to move halfway across the world isn't for the faint-hearted. So how would you convince the love of your life to do it for the second time? Ever since a holiday there in his 20s, Richard Resterix yearned to live in Australia. It would mean a massive amount to me. It's just something which has constantly been a thorn in my side. But his wife and daughter aren't keen on a move. I'm going to put my foot down and I'm not going to go. A week in Australia soon sees them one round. Oh, my God! <laughs> See, you're, now you're talking. <laughs> this is a perfect house to live in. But will the thought of leaving loved ones... I feel very sad. See Richard's dream bite the dust. Every week, the equivalent of a jumbo jet full of Brits leave the UK to start a new life in Australia, a country with nearly 40,000 miles of stunning coastline and an average temperature of 22 degrees. But not all that glitters is gold. Around half of those making the move end up returning home. Richard Westerick is a man on a mission. He's wanted to live in Australia since his late teens. And now the pressures of running his own business have made his desire to move stronger than ever. But there's one major stumbling block in Richard's way. Wife Nieva. Having already crossed continents once to be with him, she doesn't fancy doing it all over again. Persuading her could be mission impossible. The family's journey involves a flight that, after a nine-hour delay in Kuala Lumpur, takes nearly 34 hours to reach Australia. When they finally arrive in Adelaide, the flights clearly affected Richard. After the journey, we're really tired. It's been that long since I've even forgot where I am. On the journey to here, my dad just got his head on the cream on the seats. It was like... <laughs> The long trip has given everyone plenty of time to think about the distance they put between family. I had a lot of thoughts on the plane about the, the length of the journey, about the older relatives in my family being able to make the journey coming here. That's not fair for grandma, not fair for your mom to travel that far. I don't think they're going to make it. Nobody will come. It's his first trip to Australia since 2005, and Richard's keen to see if the country lives up to his expectations. I need to get outside and start exploring, to be honest. I can't wait to get out of the airport and have a look round and to see if it's how I remember it. As they head off into Adelaide, their entire future's riding on what unfolds over the next seven days. Meet the Resterix from Norfolk. Their dad, Richard, mum, Nieva, and seven-year-old, Isabel. Nieva's come a long way from a hard upbringing in the Philippines. We live in a squatter's area. Financially, we cannot buy everything that we want. It's very tough to, to live there. Your parents would just have like a... A, a, bowl, a of rice. bowl of rice while they had the meat. Growing up, money may have been tight, but when it came to having a close-knit family and loving friends, Nieva wasn't lacking. And I'm very close with my family. You know, I only got one sister, and my mum and my dad was there. <laughs> I've got a very good social life in the Philippines. I've got my high school friends with which I really get along well, and still met them and in college and everything. After studying accounting, Nieva found work as a clerk. <laughs> Meanwhile, 7,000 miles away, future husband Richard was in his late teens and jetting off on the trip of a lifetime to Australia with his mum. We travelled quite a bit. We'd done quite a lot of Australia. I really, really enjoyed it. The country captured his heart and Richard couldn't wait to return. When I came back in September um, from Australia, I was then saving up to, to travel around and do a bit of backpacking by myself. 
But all plans were put on hold when stars collided and he met the love of his life online. Courtesy of Bill Gates, really. It was, <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't have done it without him, would we? <laughs> yeah. First thing I heard your voice say, you sound like Harry Potter. <laughs> so posh, I said, oh. The couple quickly fell for each other. Ten months later, Nieva was by his side in the UK and they were married. But the romance meant Richard's Australian savings were gone. Everything I had saved up basically went into getting Nieva back here. Everything for the Australia had just vanished. For Nieva, leaving her home country and family was tough. It's very hard, hard to leave them because it's my life. <laughs> when I left them, I was on tears in, in the airport because, oh my, what am I doing? It was painful. Settling into her new life in the UK wasn't any easier. Always in the house, spending most of my time there because I have nobody, I don't know anybody here. It was a tough time that time. Slowly and surely over the years, Nieva's rebuilt a solid social circle. My friends here in the UK, they're quite crazy and fun. When I see them, we go out, we go for disco. They make crazy love to enjoy each other's company. The couple have now been married for um, how long, Nieva? Nine years. We are over nine years. Is that right? And she's loving life in Britain. My life today is very happy. I'm very comfortable. It's like I win a lottery, to be honest. But the picture isn't as rosy for Richard. Working long hours, the responsibilities that come with running his car mechanics business has put him under pressure. We've been through a really tough time recently. We've had to make a couple of people redundant. And it's been a lot, a lot of stress. I work so many hours. Once again, Richard's thoughts have turned to returning to Australia. It's definitely become more of a burning issue recently. With everything that's been happening at work, it would mean a massive amount to me to move to Australia. It's just something which has constantly been a thorn in my side for a long time now. But he could have a fight on his hands persuading Nieva. Having already moved across the world once, she's not keen to do it a second time. Leaving everything behind again, starting all over again, is that meaning me not having friends for a year? Somebody to is it somebody to play with? Not having that again, not on this age. She also fears starting again in a new country could mean a return to the financial difficulty she experienced as a child. My fear to Australia is to lose the security and, and go back to zero again. Is this with her mum on opposing the move? My dad told me that ever since he was young, he, he wanted to go to Australia. I never wanted to because I really miss my friends and family who lives here. Richard's hoping Australia will give his family a brighter future, but Nieva could be tough to persuade. If this proves wrong, and I really have a strong feeling this is wrong, I'm going to put my foot down and I'm not going to go. The restaurants are spending their trial week in Adelaide, voted Australia's most livable city three years in a row. Their base for the week is in Seacliff, just a 20-minute drive from Adelaide city centre. It's wet and dark when the family arrive, but that hasn't dampened Richard's spirits. My house is nice. The high, the high ceiling's really nice, aren't they? Nieva isn't going to be swayed that easily. I'm not, I'm not very keen about the, the floor. Whoa. This is awesome. But the open plan living space is a hit. Quite like it. That's open area. That is just lovely. I'll sit down and watch TV and talk to you while you're cooking. Mm. Oh, this looks so cute. Wow. Eh? As they settle in, Richard knows he's got his work cut out, especially after having arrived in less than ideal conditions. I think I've got to really put out the stops during this week to, to convince them after the rain and everything, but I think the weather's going to improve, but, you know, and they'll, they'll enjoy that. Is his castle bed fit in quite nicely there, wouldn't it? No. 
But there could be another storm on the horizon in the shape of Nieva's concerns about uprooting her life for a second time. It's pretty scary, to be honest. I mean, when I moved to the UK, I'm, I'm, st I'm young. And, you know, with yourself, when you're young, you easily get friends. And Richard's well aware he'll also have to sell the dream to his daughter this week. You know, she's got as much right in this family to make a decision as what me and Neva both have. And if she's not convinced, and Neva's not convinced, then it's a no-go, you know, it's going to be... It's going to be an end, end of the line for us. If I move here, I'll really miss my very close friends at school and some in-law at school. Love got in the way of his last return to Australia. The week ahead could be Richard's final shot at ever calling the country home. When you've spent your whole life thinking about this place and now I've got the chance to prove to my family that it's the right thing to do, it's, yeah, there's a lot riding on this week. Back in the UK, the Restorics own a detached house in a quiet part of Thetford in Norfolk. We love this house, don't we? It's everything yeah. I wanted. I've got a room big enough to watch TV in and with the speakers and everything I want in it. It's got our own personal touch to it. The only thing we don't like about this house is there's no privacy in the gardens at all. You don't like it when I go out in the garden with my box of shorts on to go to the garage, do you? Yeah. <laughs> That's so short. The family's budget for buying a house in Australia would be £300,000. And one thing's right at the top of Richard's wish list. Swimming pool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. If there's a swimming pool, it's going to be a proper dream yeah. house. And properties down under will need to impress if Nieva's to be persuaded to make the move. What I've got right now is the house I'm going to stay forever till I die. So the Australian house has to be better. To find out what kind of house the Restorix could call home in Australia, today we'll show Richard and Nieva three properties, two on budget and a third which could be their dream home. Only after they've seen each one will they discover its value. For their first viewing, the family travel northwards along the coast to Henley Beach. Just 15 minutes from the city, it's a popular choice with families looking for an easy-going beachside vibe. Will this three-bedroom home be enough to wow Nieva? Outside, first impressions are good. It's very pretty. Look at that. We cannot afford this. You don't know that yet, Nieva. Inside reactions are positive. Wow. That's beautiful. It's a lovely room. See yourself living here? Yeah. <laughs> That's a great start. But in the master suite... Ah, mommy and daddy's wow. room. One Aussie feature seems to be missing. The only one this house hasn't got is a built-in wardrobe, which in yeah. I thought all Australian houses got. But on closer inspection... Whoa! Whoa. Where is my wardrobe Whoa. going? Oh, oh, it's, it's both! My shoe wrap! That's <laughs> enough. That's perfectly good enough for me. Do you like it? I love it. It's great. It's awesome. Never had a working wardrobe. <laughs> the positive vibes continue in the kitchen. Goodness. I told you! <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh, that's it. That's it. Wow. <laughs> My room. <laughs> My room. Ooh. <laughs> Outside, Nieva spots an appealing feature. What's that? Hot tub. Hot tub. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Richard strutting around in his boxer shorts shouldn't be a problem here. And how secluded it is as well, babe. Even though there's houses around, there's nobody can see you. So you can skinny dip in this one, babe, skinny yourself. Dip, yeah. <laughs> Uh, OK, Nieva could be coming around to Aussie living, as could Izzy. I actually want to move here. Do you? Yes. You have to go on a move Not here. that much. Tomorrow? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm just thinking about it. OK, OK. Nearly. Richard's work isn't done quite yet. So is this house one they could afford with their £300,000 budget? 
So the big question, do you think we can afford this house? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think the house is worth like 350 to 400,000 pounds. I think probably around about 275 to 325. Mm. Turn it over, is he? <gasps> oh, oh my gosh! It's only 4,000 pounds over budget. Not bad. That's all right, yeah. Good start. Good start. Yeah. I can't wait to see the rest. Richard could be off to a good start. Next, the family head to Golden Grove, half an hour inland from the city. With excellent schools nearby and well-kept parks, it's an area that's proved popular with British families. So will this home appeal as much as the last? I mean... <laughs> Outside, the house is setting in presses. Wow. Wow, wow it's a bit like on top of the world in here, <laughs> yeah, is it? It's very posing, isn't it? Look at that view there. Yeah, it's a stunning view, isn't it? And inside, it doesn't disappoint either. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. It's far bigger than the other one. The master bedroom hits the spot. They've all got front bedrooms, haven't Look they? Look at the view, babe. Can you imagine that? Sitting down there when you wake up with that view. But Richard and Nieva are already worrying about the price. I reckon it's going to be expensive. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It looks like it. A luxurious ensuite temporarily puts pay to money worries. Whoa! Whoa. Oh, wow. Yeah! See, you're, now you're talking! <laughs> Richard, you could be on to a winner. This is my dream bathroom! <laughs> With four bedrooms, two dining areas and two living rooms, this house offers plenty of space for the family. Yes. Nice open plan, yeah. yeah. They left the home. <laughs> That's very nice. <gasps> And then you've got another entertainment area here as well. Look. So you could even have that as your front room. Outside lies the feature Richard was hoping for. This mm -hmm. is perfect. Perfect. When you come to Australia, this is what you expect, isn't it? You know, a the big house pool. with a swimming pool. Yes. You know, it's just the stuff what dreams are made of. This house has blown everyone away. But will it be beyond their budget of £300,000? Hmm. Well, well, it's impossible we can afford this, but let's see. I want to turn that card. <laughs> it's got to be five hundred thousand pounds. It's not gonna be like three hundred fifty no, or four hundred. No, it's impossible. gonna be sky high over our budget. Should I do it now? Yeah. Cover it. <gasps> oh no! Oh. Way. That's four thousand pounds below budget. Impossible! No! No way! 296,000 pounds! And Izzy is so smitten, her opposition to a move could be melting away. Let's buy it. Let's buy it, yeah. You can get a, a very good house in that money. This is a perfect house to live in. It is. Richard's dream has received a shot in the arm, and there's still one more house to view. Staying in Golden Grove, we found what could be the family's dream home. It's situated in one of the area's more desirable pockets, and as soon as she sets eyes on it, Nieva's ecstatic. No! Why? No! Why? You're joking me! <laughs> that one? Yeah, that, that one, yeah. <laughs> this is in disbelief. Are you 100% sure in the white pictures, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, this is where we've told to be, is he? Oh. Inside, everyone's enthusiasm grows. Oh. Wow, this feels oh like you're walking God. into a stately home, doesn't it? Oh, my God. The property boasts four bedrooms and a study. But it's the master suite that dazzles them the most. Oh, oh my God! A walk through wardrobes hidden behind the bed. It's a lot more space. That's, that's really, really different. I've not seen that before. But the icing on the cake is the ensuite bathroom, where all the best things come in twos. He's in her suite. Shall we? He's in hers as well. well. Can you imagine if the bedroom's this good? 
What's the rest of the house like? Oh my god, I'm gonna, see. <laughs> I'm gonna go first. <laughs> <if you want. laughs> Nieva just can't contain her excitement when they step into the kitchen. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> no way, I can afford this. Even the kitchen is worth the house of our house. Look outside. <laughs> then Izzy spots something through the window. Outside! Oh, that is a clean pool. <laughs> <laughs> Feel it, this is my house <laughs> for the day. The sun's here as well. I love this. Absolutely love this. Love this. Absolutely love this. This is just something you'd see a movie star staying in or yes. do, do you know what I mean? Yes, that's just, right. Yeah, not not for average people like us. No. No, not at all. Everyone loves this house. But is it reserved for the rich and famous as Richard fears? Mm. The family's budget Easy. is three hundred thousand pounds. So what do you think of this house, Izzy? I don't know why the people want to sell it. It's no, I don't. a nice house to live in. How much is this house worth? For me, I would say probably £500,000, yeah. £600,000. I would say exactly yeah. the same. Probably right nearly that half a yeah. million mark. Yeah. Or more. Please, take me out of my okay. misery. Come on, Izzy. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's ninety-eight thousand pounds over budget, but that's a lot more for a hundred thousand pounds. In the future. <laughs> oh, <it's not. laughs> we cannot afford that. Let's see if I win some lottery in back home, shall we? <laughs> I'm gonna start going to lottery. I have to be in it to win it. <laughs> <laughs> cheap though. It's cheap. A lot of pounds for, for, for house, that. Yeah. It's been an eye-opening day property hunting for the Resterix with each house eclipsing the last. Property One wowed Nieva with its impressive master bedroom and a place for a dip in the backyard. Property Two up the stakes with Izzy wanting to move right in and the pool Richard desired. But Property Three was a real winner with curb appeal in spades, a dream kitchen and all the space the family could need. So with all that in mind, how will the Restorix vote when it comes to choosing between property at home or away. Australia! Australia! Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> what do you like, Izzy, the most? Maybe like the houses with the swimming pools. I thought you was going to be the hardest one to persuade about Australia. It's open plan and that is what I like the most. Yeah, it's got Australia. to be Australia. Yeah, Australia is good. In yeah, the yeah. houses are fantastic here. This is a great turnout. First round of voting, and we've got Australia. Oh, you still got the job in the rest to go, babe. Well, I've got the ultimate <laughs> decision to make at the end. A full house of votes for Australia means Richard's week's off to a solid start. But there's still some way to go yet if he's to get Nieva and Izzy fully on board. Back in the UK, Richard runs a garage with his mum, but that responsibility means there's little room for time off. Probably do 60, 70 hours a week, um, working for 12 days on the trot, and then I have the two days off on the weekend to spend with my family, which isn't enough, really. Nieve is a bookkeeper and works at the family garage. I love my job because of the flexibility that I can I can work at any time I want. Uh, I can still spend time with Easy. In Australia, Richard would be hoping to free himself of the pressures of running a business and work for someone else. It's not been the easiest of time. I've been bringing home a lot of stress. You know, I haven't been myself because of it, and I, I just need a change. Nieva, meanwhile, won't move if it would mean putting her career aspirations on ice. If I cannot find work in Australia, I would rather stay here in the UK because there's a future perspective for me. I'm thinking of being a qualified accountant here in the UK because I'm so settled now, I can actually start studying. As the couple head out to explore their work opportunities in Adelaide, Richard's feeling the pressure. Today is a really, really stressful day, to be honest. I've been dreading today. If you're not going to earn the money 
that you want to buy the houses what we saw, then it kind of bursts the bubble a little bit. We sent Richard to a large car dealership where he met service manager Craig. Desperate to discover if he could reduce his working hours, Richard wastes no time asking Craig about typical Aussie shifts. What is your normal working day for a mechanic? We work Monday to Friday from 8 o'clock until 4.06, which gives the 7.6 hour day with a half an hour lunch break and uh, a 15 minute morning tea break. And uh, our technicians work three Saturdays on and one off each month. That's much better than working 12 days on the trot. But would Richard's qualifications transfer down under? Your mechanical ability and skills should be transferable to and acceptable in Australia. That's great news, to be honest. That's fantastic. Just what I wanted to hear. So far, so good for Richard. Meanwhile, Nieve has got an appointment in central Adelaide with Andrew, who runs an accounting firm. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Neva. I'm Andrew. Um, Welcome to Dinner's Net. She's keen to hear if she could fit a working day around caring for Izzy. We're quite flexible. Um, I like to make sure I go to all my children's events so, and I try and ensure that uh, staff have the same opportunities because you need happy staff at the end of the day. But with her qualifications and experience, what kind of role does Andrew think she could secure? I would have no issues with your qualifications and for you working as a bookkeeper, accountant and then um, working your way through and it's, then it's based on experience and you have training on the job and you can obtain qualifications on the job. <laughs> it's not the kind of reaction Andrew's used to, but being able to pursue a career as a fully qualified accountant is a massive plus for Nieva. I'm very happy to hear that, Andrew. I'm very, very happy. It's something that I that probably make, make, make me think that, yeah, I want to move to Adelaide. Okay, Andrew, now the big question, how much would I earn? Full time, you'd probably earn about 60,000 Australian to 70,000 Australian dollars. <gasps> Working full-time could see Nieva earn around 35,000 pounds, more than triple what she gets part-time at home. I have to ask my mother to give me pay rise if I'm staying in the UK. Well, we're not paying you as much now, because it's a lot. <laughs> It's been a great day for Nieva. Across town, Rich is getting to the all-important question. So what would I be expected to earn if a position was available? Anywhere from around 50,000 to about 57,000 is a general uh, wage. That's about 25,000 pounds, way below the 40,000 pounds Richard brings in at home. A little bit shocked at that, to be honest. You know, I was expecting to be paid, you know, a little bit more with the skill and the qualifications I've got. A shrinking salary is a big blow. I feel quite deflated, to be honest. It's quite a big dent. Um, I wasn't expecting the wages to be quite so low, in all fairness. Um, I think it's just a little bit too low to, to make a good go of things, to be honest. The couple have had very different results on earnings today. So how will that affect their vote? Australia! Oh. <laughs> well, you knew that was going to come, didn't you? <laughs> no. Yeah. Am I turning then? Oh. I've been voting Australia twice now. That's all right. That's good. Oh. I'll just send you out to work. I'll just live the life of luxury. I'll become a house dad. Oh, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> It's a case of tables turned. While Nieva's eyes have been open to the upsides of life in Australia, Richards reluctantly lodged his first vote for the UK. Spending a day experiencing Australia's great outdoors under a sun-kissed sky could be just what's needed to not only keep Nieva on board, but also persuade Richard a smaller salary is a sacrifice worth making. The family head to West Beach where they meet world-class speed skater Carly for an inline skating lesson. Morning. Morning. How are you doing? Morning. How are you guys? Who feels like doing some skating this morning? Yeah. Can I get please hurt? teach us, please. <laughs> <laughs> While Richard and Izzy are quick to get their skates on, someone's struggling.
It's exactly the kind of family time Richard's been craving. Doing all the activities out in the glorious sunshine, it's pretty cool to be honest, you know, you, you don't normally get this weather in England, it's, it's nice, it's really nice. And Izzy seems sold. I've really enjoyed the roller skating. I'm not certain that my mum is very good at rollerblading. Because <laughs> 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 um, when she just couldn't get up, that was very funny. I'm going back. Don't think a career as a skater's on the cards, Nieva. I look like a crab trying to stand up on it. She actually managed to make me stand up, which is I'm quite pleased. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Over an ice cream, Nieva's quick to confess the country's climate at least could be winning her round. I think it's been brilliant, you know. I mean, it started really gloomy and, <laughs> and everything. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it's gonna, like college yeah. weather when we got here. Yeah. 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 But now, it's, now today, it's, it's brilliant. How about you? How do you feel after finding out about that job that is not... Yeah, put a bit of a downer on things, didn't it, really? But it's not deterred me in any way, I don't think. You know, I still really like the place. Um, you know, money, as we know, doesn't buy happiness. You know, it I doesn't. Just, just want to be able to live a normal life without the stress. Richard believes a lower salary might be a worthwhile compromise for the dream he's chasing. You can work to your heart's content, but if you can't go out and enjoy yourself, then you're not living, you're just existing. And I, I, this is why I want to come here. But Nieve is less certain compromising their finances is worth the risk. I'm thinking about UK, how comfortable the life there. I personally like our life in the UK because we can do this on holiday. Yeah. We still have to find out more about the finances here. And having experienced poverty firsthand, she's keen to avoid being in that position again. I don't want to struggle, because I struggled when I was young, and I don't want to come back to the same position. Richard, though, is staying positive and hoping today's worked more wonders on his wife. I'm very surprised the way Never's been voting uh, in Australia, and, you know, to have two cards so far for Australia is, is quite impressive. I'm hoping it's going to be number three today. Is Richard right? It's time for everyone to vote on Australia's lifestyle versus the UK's. Based on the activities that we've done today, our vote goes for... Australia! Australia! All of Australia. Wait, that's another vote for Australia. But and look you. at the, the look at the weather. We can do far more many things in this sort of weather. It's pretty awesome, isn't it? It's been a great day today. It's lovely. You know, I can get used to this as well. Walking on the beach. With Nieva and Izzy sold on Australia's lifestyle, Richard could be one step closer to persuading them to make the move. First, though, he'll have to address Nieva's concerns on finances down under. They think their home in the UK is worth around £240,000. To see if their valuation's accurate, we sent round two estate agents. Uh -huh. I like the look of that house, though. Great spacious entrance hall, tiled floor, ideal for children. It's a nice size lounge, well presented. Obviously a children's playroom, could be a home uh, office. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fantastic size conservatory, great space for entertaining. Floor's a little bit worn. <laughs> yeah, we need to change that one, don't just, we? Just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> OK, a really good size uh, family garden. You may want just to pay t some attention to the fence panels, which are, are broken to one side. <laughs> I told you to fix them. In the current market, I would value this property at £260,000. Wow. For a quick sale, I would suggest marketing the property at £240,000. Oh, nice. Right. I would value this property at £265,000. For a quick sale, I would ask £250,000. Quite surprised by that, to be honest. I think that's uh, well, a lot more than what we paid for it, isn't it? It is a lot more what yeah. we paid for, but that's we've done loads of work. We've done loads of work to it, but that's, it's more than what we thought it was worth. 
Valuations higher than they'd hoped for is a good start. Next, the couple move on to comparing costs down under, starting with a weekly food shop. Yeah. <laughs> You're better with numbers than me. Bananas. That's the standard. Six dollar twenty-two. No, that's Australian, Australian costing cost pounds. In pounds. Oh my god! <laughs> I cannot eat banana here. <laughs> Washing powder is cheaper. Two hundred five point fifty-three. Worst off at six pound eighty-five. Mm-hmm. Spending just £35 a month more on food shouldn't cause too many problems. That's doable. That's doable. Next, they take a look at their bigger outgoings, basing their figures on the second property they saw. Look at the mortgage. It's cheaper. Mm-hmm. Electricity is more. The transport is good. 1600 in total, the couple work out they'd be spending £139 a month less in Australia. That's cool. But, based on Richard's lower potential earnings down under and Nieva working part-time, the overall outcome isn't as rosy. So it would be £1,361 a month worse off. The couple would be more than £16,000 a year worse off. Wow. That's a lot of money. There's That's a lot, a lot of, money. of money to lose. Mm -hmm. But, once again, Richard's remaining positive. But money doesn't buy happiness, babe. It doesn't. And if we can afford to live a comfortable life, rather than an uh, extremely comfortable life, then it's still an option, isn't it? It's your call. Mm. It's your call. Despite putting on a brave face, the figures are disappointing, and the Restorix would be significantly out of pocket if they move to Australia. Will that prove to be a pill too bitter to swallow as they cast their votes? Australia! What? When you're gonna lose 16 grand a year, it's, it's a lot of money to lose. But it's, it's another one for Australia for you, isn't it? Um, uh -huh. I haven't got that much money when I was in the Philippines and I'm happy. Yeah. And, you That's know, true. we can work things out here. Mm -hmm. We can work things out here. While the finances down under didn't work in Richard's favour, Nieva's been reassured life could still be comfortable in Australia. And he remains convinced having less money isn't everything. But perhaps the biggest challenge of the week remains. With Nieva and Izzy voting for Australia all week, Will hearing from friends at home see them change their minds on a move? Do you want to watch a um, video from our family and friends from the UK? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, let's watch them. Hi guys, really missing you. Hello. Hi. Hello, you lot out there in the sunshine. Miss you. Good luck, girls. <laughs> <laughs> as, as a family, they're very close. They, they, they do everything together. He'll do anything for any of his mates if somebody's in need. He'll be there. I think he's a fantastic son. <laughs> you know, he's very caring. Um, he's really, really hardworking. She's always funny, and whenever I'm upset, she makes me laugh. She's a very integral part of the of uh, the circle of the friends. Yeah. When she said that Neva and the family will be going to Australia, it was a bit of a shock. <laughs> oh <my laughs> I'm just God. crying already. <laughs> Just be gutting to lose a long-term friend, especially a good friend who's who's always there for you. Um, to lose that would be really hard. I would hate it. I would really hate it. Not being able to see Izzy, not being able to talk to Richard when I wanted to, ask his advice, going out for meals with him, everything. That just will stop. I don't want her to leave. <laughs> Never, Richard, easy. Go with whatever is in your heart. I need my mate back and, and have good times again. So uh, hurry up and come home. Please be careful and look at all the pros and cons before you make this big decision. You can choose whatever you want, but hopefully you stay here. That's it hard, isn't it? No, I don't want to move. No, you don't want to move. Back to zero. Back to zero again now. <laughs> What about you, babe? It's a bit hard. Yeah, isn't it? You know, I can't. 
<laughs> Being too emotional. Okay. Nieva and Izzy have been left reeling as the emotional cost of a move has hit home. And that could be enough to see Richard's long-held dream bite the dust for good. As their trial week in Adelaide draws to a close, where the family will decide to spend their future is far from certain. Since he first set foot in Australia in his 20s, Richard's been keen to return for good. While there's been some bumps this week... It's still a bit hard for me to take that I'm going to have such a big pay cut. The country's proved to be everything he remembered. It's exceeded my expectations. I've just loved every second of it. Nieva's and Izzy's opposition to the move has softened dramatically over the last seven days. I said to myself, oh, I should not like it, I should not like it, I should not like it. But how can you not like it? <laughs> As the week went on, well... It just became hot and I really enjoyed it. But messages from home have now given them pause for thought. Everything is brilliant here. But sometimes having your family around you and your, that friends, that sort of friends that you, ha you have through thick and thin, sometimes that's more important than having a son. I felt very sad because I'll leave back behind so so many people that I've known for years. And knowing how Izzy feels could mean Richard's uncertain too. Am I doing the right thing? Is, it, is she going to hate me for it if I move her out here? Whether Richard will return down under for good rests on his family's final turn of the cards. Based on the amazing experiences we've had in Australia over the last few days, waking up to the beautiful views every morning, our final decision where we would like to live goes to... Australia! Australia! Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> we uh -oh. sort of know that anyway, yeah, don't we? we? Knew that, yeah. yeah, Are you all right going here on holiday? Yeah, I'm yeah. okay on holidays, but not moving. What about five-year holiday? I actually surprised myself as well. Mm -hmm. I know we're not going to earn much, but money cannot buy happiness, please. Mm. OK, group Come hug. on, then. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Ow, I'm going to There's no way of changing your mind, is he? Mm -hmm. No, want to go back to England? Yeah. yeah? OK. But it's been a good week, though. It's been an awesome yeah. week. Though Australia's irrepressible charm may have worked its magic on Nieva, the pull of family and friends for Izzy has seen Richard's dream fall at the final hurdle. Who knows, after a short spell at home, she may come round to the idea of emigrating. But wherever Richard, Nieva and Izzy decide to call home, we wish them the best of luck. After their final votes had been cast, we sat down with Richard and Nieva to get their thoughts on their Wanted Down Under experience. This week has been absolutely fantastic. It's been such an amazing opportunity to find out some facts. I now know I can come out here and live. I can afford to live. I can afford to do what we want to do, you know, and still have a good quality of life. You know, there's always uncertainty how much money we was going to earn and how much things did pan out to be, i.e. shopping, you know, all these questions have been answered and just we're just forever grateful. I'm forever grateful for the opportunity to come out and um, find out about it, to be honest. And you got my vote as well. It's not just you dreaming for Australia. Me too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it 
it went progressively nice. Because when I first come over here in this in Australia, when I arrived here, it was horrible weather. So what's the point of coming over here and things like that? But when we done all the stuff like job interview and and um, lifestyle, then we've done the houses and things like that. It's just it's just changed my opinion one by one. Really, every time every time I twist that flag, <laughs> I just cannot believe that I've been choosing Australia all the way. <laughs> Do you think you're going to be stress-free here? I don't think you'll ever be stress-free anywhere, to be honest. I don't think it's a, you know, I don't think, I think stress comes with life, but certainly it's going to be a lot, lot easier to get over that stress when you're here, isn't it? You get lovely views yeah, to get that, yeah. yeah. It's more, it's more relaxed here. It's more, it's, it's more laid back. Do you feel bad you're going home? I feel bad. I don't want to go home. I might not go home yet. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get delayed. Surely if you're going to have a delayed, let us know so we can stay a little bit yeah, longer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I might just delay myself getting to the airport <laughs> by a few months. <laughs>